This is Transformers Generations Hoist. Uh, the figure is part of the, well, um, the second batch or second wave of IDW Transformers Deluxes. But uh, I think he's, he's part of wave um, one, two, three, four, wave five, wave six of the Generations 2.0 I think Wave 6 I don't know anyway but it's safe you know it's a, it's the second the, the second batch of comic book IDW deluxe glass figures so anyway here it is he's, he's a direct repaint of Trail Cutter in case you haven't figured that one out here's the packaging um, here's the artwork and there's a little bit of a bio Okay. It also came with an IDW reprinted IDW comic book with an exclusive Hasbro cover by uh, Clayton Crane. Very nice. The artwork is just so so for me. It's okay. It's not terrible. But it's not the best comic book artwork in the world. The story is just absolutely cheesy. It's like a Twilight Zone episode of a bunch of Autobots who are stranded on a planet. You got Sunstreaker, Perceptor, who's injured, he's fused to the fuselage. You got Wind Charger and you get Hoist and they got a pet, a pet Insecticon called Bob. I mean it's ridiculous. You get Swerve, not Wind Charger, sorry, Swerve, my bad. Swerve just yapping, yapping about trying to cover for his injury. And you get to see that Hoist is really a plain, bland character, but manages to somehow save his teammates. But the ending just is a little bit bittersweet. It, it's he's just stuck in the Twilight Zone. The planet is like has this defenses, and the defense is really a, a phobia shield. I don't know what that means. It materializes. A person, uh, the uh, a Cybertronian sphere, into tangible things, and it, it's really just like the Twilight Zone for me. I didn't really like it. Crappy comic book, but what can you do? Ah, that's the reason I don't buy the IDW Transformers comic books. Um, just you know, it's a good deal to have it with a figure uh, at at no extra cost. But over here, it's around six dollars uh, for comic book. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So here he is, hoist. Uh, I remember him in G1. He was cast for a movie, and the director kept calling him Moist. I mean, <laughs> it was a funny, funny episode. If you know what I'm talking about, yeah. It's, then, then people are gonna know your age. So here he is. He is a not a repaint, not a direct repaint. My bad. He's a redeco of Trail Cutter or Trail Bra Trail Breaker. Um, it's got the same articulation, same transformation, but a new head sculpt, head mold. Uh, yeah, closer to how he looked like in G1. Obviously, he's got a different weapon. He's got this crane, and Trailbreaker has a bigger shield gun, trail cutter. Between the two, I personally like the trail cutter mold better. I think it's a better use of the mold, better head sculpt. It's got a bigger weapon. You get more value with this than a smaller weapon. But again, you know, character-wise, he does look pretty nice. So if you're going to make me choose which one to get, my answer is always going to be which one do you prefer. I mean, a lot of people like trail cutter back in G1 more than trail than hoist. Some people like hoist more. So it really is a matter of preference, and you can't argue with that. There's no better figure in that regard. And here is Henke, or Classics, or Generations, Universe, Ironhide. So they're, they're in good scale with each other, pretty much. Let's get rid of that. Articulation is exactly the same as Trail Cutter, so I'm not going to go too much with it. This is not the official weapon mode. The official way, you can have it that way if you want. The official weapon mode is you fold up the crane and... It's sort of a pseudo blaster of sorts. Kind of looks like a gun, but yeah, pretty lame. All right, uh, to transform him, it's the same transformation as. Wait, go ahead and turn the face around. Fold that. It's exactly the same as Trail Cutter, so I'm not gonna put too much and talk about it too much. It's a little bit of a clearance issue right here, easily remedied. 
Okay, um, go ahead and fold this up, fold this, and we'll do the legs later. Do it this way. Set it up like this for now. And fold this one out. Now it's the hands and arms that are really the tough one to transform. If you're giving this to your kid, make sure you supervise the transformation before you let them do it on their own. So rotate the vice from the bicep hinge 180 degrees. And what you want to do is you just want to rotate the wheels out this way. All right. And then you can join the arms like that. Go ahead and open up the door panels right here. Right there. And the whole idea is to push this whole assembly using these hinges all the way up to the bottom of the engine. So with great difficulty <laughs> you can do it. You can do it one at a time. I think that's best. We can do it together without risking breaking it. It should fit all the way here. But the problem is once you've already fit one in, it's going to be very difficult to fit the other. So might as well do them at the same time. At this point, go ahead and just fold them up like that. See, that wasn't too hard. Okay, go ahead and fold the fists inward. And then just snap the panels of the forearms to form the doors. It should you should be in good shape once you've managed to do that. Okay, should be enough clearance for hoist to roll out. Okay, and then the feet, just unpeg them like we did, and then tab them in like that. Okay, the legs I meant, and tab them in. So he does share the same body type, same vehicle type as trail cutter. But the big difference being that he only has this teeny tiny of an accessory. Um, I wish they could have made this accessory bigger. I mean, they, there was enough budget for as big a weapon as trail cutters. I mean, this does not translate into that. They could have doubled the plastic of this one, made a bigger crane, made it a more dynamic crane. So I think this mold is getting the short end of the stick when it comes to the weapons. But, you know, it's hoist. So here he is with IDW Bumblebee. Obviously, he's very small. It's not in scale with Bumblebee. It's a very small alt mode uh, for a deluxe class. But what I'm really impressed with this is the paint apps that they use. Great silver there, the uh, yellow and black stripes, and the transparent um, plastic. They didn't just paint a flat green on it. It would have looked funny. They did a metallic green coat on it, which is very, very nice. Kudos to the um, design team who actually insisted on having uh, metallic paint on it. I think it's more expensive than the flat one. And thank you for not being such big cheapskates. So, there you go, folks. It rolls very well. It's exactly the same as Trail Cutter, which is the, the crane um, accessory. So, that is hoist uh, from the second batch of comic book IDW deluxes from the Transformers Generations line. I hope you've enjoyed this video review. If you did, please click the thumbs up icon at the bottom. Follow me on Twitter, Keek, Instagram. Check out two of my channels on YouTube, FX France and Chefatron. Chefatron will have the reviews. FX France will just have the toy hauls and vlogs. Transformers Generations hoist. Thanks for watching.